how to install a whole house water filtration system in your plumbing system. I'm standing in a hole, as you can tell, it's probably about four feet deep or so. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna install a whole house water filtration and treatment system in one tank. Now, this video is sponsored by Halo, and we teamed up with Halo because of what they do for water and the plumbing industry. If you're a homeowner, you need to understand there's things in your water that you really don't want in there. The water treatment companies have to put chlorine and different things in the water to really keep it clean. Because when the water gets to you, it can have no mold, mildew, and bacteria. People would get sick. We're gonna to talk to you about all these different chemicals that are in there, how you can find out what's in your water and why something like this is so important. But to be honest, it doesn't start here. It starts inside the house. So let's go inside the house and explain how we check the water to see if something like this is even required. So what we're gonna do, and I've let the water run for a little bit, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill it to this line right up here on top. I'm gonna to add five drops of the orthotolidine and it's already turning yellow, I can see that. Now, if you look at this, look at this color compared to where it is over here. Now, I'm gonna try and hold it up to the light where I can try and get it exact. And I'm thinking I'm at a 3.0 on chlorine. It, it's easy for me to see, it, it's right up around, and it may be just a little bit above 3.0. So we see very easily here that we're up at three. Now, if they had a swimming pool, and I've had one of my technicians do this before, say, hey, look, you got a pool out there. Let me go test the chlorine in your pool and compare it. The swimming pool had one part per million. Now, pools are recommended to have between one and three. And if you've ever been in a pool that you can smell the chlorine, that's up around three. That's what we're dealing with right here. So we know that we need to get the chlorine out of this water. That's a no brainer. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this all out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and test the pH. And then our pH is kind of high. We're probably between 7.8 and 8.2. So with me being up around 7.8 and 8.2, for a swimming pool, they want you to maintain between 7.2 and 7.8. Ideal is right around 7.6. So that's what we're looking at. pH is a little bit high. So guys, that's literally how easy it is to check the water for someone find out more about what's in your water, go to ewg.org. That is a third party testing site. It's not Halo, it's not me, it's not even the plumber there trying to tell you what's in your water. This is an organization that does third party testing on all the water around the country. So go check it out and see what you think you need for your water. Okay, so now that we're back out here, here's what I wanna do. I'm gonna go ahead and set the tank in, bolt the head up, that way we can look at it. I've got a polybutylene line right here under me that I don't want to touch. If this was anything but our house, I'd tell the homeowner, look, we need to go ahead and replace this because I'm not going to do any repairs on it. So instead of me touching this line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, dig this water line out a little bit further and find out how I install the system here, come off the head and turn and tie back into the water system. So let's set the tank in here and see what this looks like. Okay, so as you see, we got this down in here now and we're installing the H20 system by Halo because it's a filtration system and a treatment system all in one. Two of my favorite things about this, there's no backwash on this, meaning we don't have to tie it into a drain line. Now, sometimes that's a lot of problem because you've got people that have a line installed in their garage for them to install a water treatment system but there's no drain line there. So this helps eliminate it because of no backwash. The other great thing about it is there's no electricity required. So we're gonna go ahead, start laying this thing out the way we want it. We're gonna look at our water lines coming in. We're gonna go ahead and draw it up, do a takeoff. That way we can get the materials headed out here and then go ahead and do this install. Now, I've got one inch nominal pipe size threads right here. I'm gonna need two female adapters to tie onto this to come down and get my water line. So I've got my water line here where it goes from polybutylene to copper comes up right around over here. So I'm gonna dig this out and uncover it. That way I can cut on the other side of the valve, install this three valve bypass right here and come up into here. Now, whenever I come out of here, I've also got my sediment guard. So I wanna make sure that I have everything done 
so that I've got room for that. We'll build out that, our three valve bypass, put it all in and be ready to go. The next day. I'm gonna go ahead and, and get this going and see what we can do here. So Randy, my thought is I'm gonna cut it right here below this 90, come across here, cut it back here, come across here. I could put my three valve bypass right there actually, put the box over it right here. They had two boxes stacked, so if they're the same size, we may need to make this one deeper or we put bricks around the edge, something like that. Uh, multiple boxes is fine, I'm good either way. Uh, is water shut off yet or do, I'd say go ahead and turn it off. We're, uh, we're ready as soon as we, well, I'll tell you what, we can prefab some stuff if you want to. All right, we're gonna have to dig this out because this out here's gonna come down too. Now basically all we've got is our supply line and our bypass and whatnot. What I'm looking at is we, we pull that. So that'll pull that back just a little bit. This line here will come up across, up 90 over and in to here. And this will pull back so we've got room for that. We'll need a valve here and here and that, that's what isolates all this. All right, so what we're getting ready to do is now treat the filter. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to soak it. Now you can pre-soak this, and if we were installing it in a garage or a house, we might do something like that, where we could literally roll a dolly into the truck, unload it, get it into the garage, get it into wherever we're gonna put it, and be fine like that. Since we knew we were putting this in the ground, we didn't want to have this thing so heavy that we, that we couldn't just get it in here and move it around. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna open the valve on the bypass that actually supplies the water to here. Now, I love a three valve bypass like this. The reason being, I can literally have these off. If you saw what we did is we had everything hooked up before we cut the wet main water. So we didn't have the customer without water for too terribly long. We made our last two cuts, tied it together, and then did this here. And the good thing is, we literally just shut the water off at the meter just for a few minutes, long enough to make that last tie-in. That way, we knew that the water coming in was dead. With my three-valve bypass, I can actually bypass this, which is what we need to do because of the way we've got it installed, and the customer still has their normal water, their normal city tap water. But once this thing is soaked, and we go through the pre-install soak, and we go through the post-install rinse, then what we can do is turn this valve off and turn these valves on, and that runs everything through here after we get everything else done. So, like I said, right now, we're just trying to fill the tank. That way, the filtration system soaks. So I've got everything open here. My valve is open here. I'm gonna close it down just a little bit because I don't want it to just start pouring in here. And I went ahead and closed the valve here to the sediment filter. This is gonna be like your final polishing. It's gonna help get rid of the fines, the little things that you know maybe made it through here. The sediment filter is gonna get rid of all of it. So we're gonna go ahead and shut that off until we get everything rinsed, purged, clean, good, ready to go. So right now, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on this valve. 
That's gonna allow water to come in here, fill up the filter, and then it'll come out, come in here to the valve, come out here. Once it's out here, I know that we're full here, so we're gonna be good to go. And now all we gotta do is bleed out the air, let it fill with water. We're gonna allow this to soak at least 48 hours. Now we knew that installing it and we're getting ready to go out of town. So it's actually gonna actually soak over 48 hours, which is not a problem. Soon as we come back, we can purge this system, do our final rinse and have everything ready to go. All right, so I know we're supposed to wait 48 hours in order to flush. Well, actually, we've probably waited a whole lot longer than that. It's been 11 days. We're going to hook everything up. We're going to run a flush on this and just make sure that we got it ready. Everything is soaked very good. The carbon should be great. We're going to flush it out. We're going to go through the steps and make sure we do everything right, and then we'll be ready to go. Okay, so step one is going to be to hook up the water hose. What we're trying to flush right now is the filter part. So I'm gonna open this valve up. You can hear it go through. You can hear the air coming through because remember, we're at the top of the tank right here. One thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and set a timer for five minutes because what I'm gonna do, shut this off, let it pressure back up. And then we're gonna do it again. What we're doing here is agitating the media. This is gonna help clean it up, get all those fines off of the charcoal, out of the system. That way it doesn't end up in the homeowner's drinking water. I'm gonna keep this turned off for a minute. That lets the pressure build back up in the tank. And then when I open it back up, we'll start rinsing out the fines again. Now we're gonna do this five or six times before we even worry about looking at the water and making sure all the fines are rinsed out, we want to make sure that we rinse it as much as possible. So this will take about 30 minutes because we're going to do this multiple times, but we want to make sure we're giving the customer, the homeowner, perfectly clean water, which is what we sold them. Let's go down here and look at the bucket and see what's coming out. All right, so six minutes again. So we, we've done it twice now. So I'm gonna start it again at six minutes. And then at five minutes, I'm gonna open it back up. Let's rinse it out again, see what it's doing. And we'll make this thing happen. All right, we're down to five minutes. Open it up. I mean, you can hear that water flow going. So I'm going wide open just to, to flush out as much of the fines as I can. And we'll see how this goes. All right, so we've done this four times now. We know we've got a couple more times to go. We're still getting a little bit of dirty water. Go ahead and show that to you here in a second. But we're getting to where I can hear the water flow better all the way through the five minute process. So you can listen to it in the beginning. You'll hear the flow and see it and Okay, so as long as the customer's water is still coming out like this, we're gonna keep on rinsing. We wanna make sure that we get all this fine out of their water. That way this doesn't end up in their kitchen sink, in their dishwasher, in their shower or tub. Because they're gonna think, wait, I did not get a filtration system. I got a mess. All right, and I've still got good water flow here at the end, so I've got a feeling we're getting close. Uh, as you saw from looking at the water, we're still getting fines in it. So it's not perfect, not where it needs to be. So I've got the timer going and we'll do this again, but I'm gonna have to run jump in a meeting. So we may take a break here in the middle of it, but we're gonna let it set. We're gonna let it flow and then see what happens from there.
We think we've got it all done here. We think that we've flushed it out enough where we're down to just a few particles. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. We're gonna let it run five more minutes and check the bucket and see what we got. Okay, now I stopped where I did. Here's, here's a little bitty piece of the fine. This is what you're trying to get out. And that's just a little bitty piece of carbon. I mean, it's not gonna hurt anybody but you don't want it to get inside your system or anything like that. So, man, I'm looking down in here. This water is looking pretty daggum good. All right, let's go ahead and shut this system down and get it all turned back on. So guys, we're actually looking good now. We've, we've got good, clean water. This is completely flushed. We know everything's good. Now all we need to do is put the sediment guard online. So we literally, we know that we've got water coming through here all the way up to here. Okay, so now that we know we've got water up here, I'm gonna bleed the air out of it. All right, so we're good here. Water onto here, all the way through. What I do now is Now what we'll do, we'll go ahead and go to an outside faucet, turn it on to help get anything, any air, anything like that out of the line that we can. Then we'll go inside, test the water again, just to see the difference in chlorine and pH level. Beautiful. All right, so I'll, I've let the water run here for a couple of minutes. And I'm gonna do the exact same test that we did the other day. There's no yellow to it. There's a, a big difference in, in what it was the other day. We're way down around in here. The other day we were way up in here. So chlorine level looks really, really good. Now remember though, this is a filter and conditioner. So let's see what it does to the pH level. Okay, now it didn't do much. Actually, it brought the pH level way up. Okay, so this is what you want your water to look like. This is good water. It, it's not acidic. Uh, it, it, it's higher alkaline than ideal, the, the middle. But I mean, you know, people pay for a high alkaline water every day. Look at the colors here. So guys, I gotta tell you, this, this is a good job. We put it in, customer now has no chlorine in their water or has very minimal chlorine in their water, high pH level in their water. So th this is done really, really good. The things to remember are it's a one tank system for filtration and conditioning. No electricity, no drain required. That makes for a simple, easy install and a 10 year warranty. Literally, it's set it and forget it. Once you install it, the only thing you're gonna have to come back and do every now and then is change the sediment filter. But if you're a plumber, that gets you out to make sure you check everything, make sure everything's still going good. If you're a homeowner and you order these into this yourself, or you buy these from your plumber, it's a very simple filter change out. So this is a great thing. If you wanna find out more about this product and God, either how to make more money for your company or how to take better care of your customers, or if you're a homeowner, how to get the best water possible, go to halowater.com and figure out what's in your water and how to get rid of it.